the mainstream white newspaper, the Washington Evening Star, published an article titled Old Mammy's Memorial, endorsing the bill's passage. Affection and attachment between the white child and its colored nurse were the rule. The proposal will be received with pleasure by a great number of men and women, a large proportion of whom are not old enough to have had a regular colored mammy before the Civil War. There is a happy and tender sentiment behind the proposal. The colored mammy was an institution in the South and border states worthy of being symbolized in stone and bronze. At first, the main debate came from a white male sculptor named Ulrich Stonewall Jackson Dunbar, whose name is a tribute to the Confederate general. Dunbar charged that his earlier design for a Mammy monument, which he had made about 16 years before, was stolen by the sculptor George Julian Zolnay, which is the image we saw first. The Washington Post quoted Dunbar as saying, why, look how the mammy is holding the white baby in my statue and doing the same in his. See the treatment of the pickaninnies trying to have their mother pay attention to them? It is the same idea. But the real controversy came after fierce opposition to the bill's passage from Black women, including Molly Church Terrell and Hallie Quinn Brown, who represented the National Association of Colored Women and the NAACP. Terrell's 1923 letter to the editor entitled The Black Mammy Monument was first published in the Washington Evening Star. She jumped at the opportunity to expose White's racism through her searing critique of the Black Mammy myth. White's sentimental affection for their Black Mammies repackaged slavery as a benign institution. The proposed monument was an erasure of the violence and pain experienced by enslaved women and their families, Terrell charged, and was part of an effort to perpetuate Black women's subordination. Terrell's defiant critique of the planned monument struck a nerve and received widespread attention. Her editorial was widely reprinted in Black and white newspapers, with its largest circulation via the Literary Digest which had almost 1 million readers, although Terrell was disappointed that it reprinted her words without attributing authorship to her. Other leading Black activist club women also wrote outraged editorials. In 